And by the way, Fisher Price and Mattel don't know anything about this because I did call them in the beginning to say we were going to change their motherboard and were they interested in anything we discovered or did and they connected me to the legal department so I hung up. <laughs> the original piece was called the Battle of the Pyramids because it was sort of about Napoleon's invasion of Egypt and actually the Elmos I purchased spoke French. So when I first saw um, this Elmo TMX, which could do remarkable things, um, I had had a residency in the Artificial Intelligence Laboratory in Zurich, Switzerland for six months. We couldn't get a robot to fall down and stand up, but Fisher Price and Mattel did. Part of the reason they can't stand up very well and synch synchronize is because they depend on those two eyes to push themselves up. The eyes actually hit the ground and then stand up. So I decided the project would be to synchronize an army of um, reconfigured robotic toys, these Elmos, performing military maneuvers in a very rigid fashion using sensors and two-way wireless communication. It's kind of overkill for Elmo. So the code is in Arduino and it's on here. All the visitor has to do is, hopefully, push this button and they should start moving. So I'm going to push the button. We remade the motherboards so to our own specs. We made our own boards so that we could put you know, isolate the actions. And on that motherboard, we placed a XB, and these are the early XBs, they're XB1s, which could communicate between a, a master and the slave. There's another thing about it is that I love that shape. It's such a stupid shape. You know, it's got these big toy feet and this little belly like a toddler and there's something about that shape that's sort of um, especially for the, mo the 3D models that were made it's sort of techno endearing techno adorable this size I'm going to cast in bronze for a war memorial um, you see the soldiers in action in, in the piece and this will be a memorial statue of the um, warrior. In all my work with, with robots, that's what people do. I had the, this robot that roamed uh, the Whitney for three months, and uh, you could operate it uh, from online, but when no one was operating it, it had an autonomous personality. And that was very serious, with very serious writing by me, and it spouted this wisdom, and uh, you know, so it would go from discussing the deterioration of the planet to like, hey, I like your... <laughs> yeah. If someone came on to use it, right, you know? Most of the interchange when people use it was about, was sex and flirtation, you know? No one was interested in the serious robot whatsoever. I mean, it was a great lesson. It's like nobody cared what it did autonomously, you know? Everyone cared, which was great, about using it and using it to co make contact with people in the museum. So I would go on in the middle of the night and, and the cleaning people would be there and I'd say like, oh, you missed a spot, you know, or something. And they would totally freak out.